Hello all, thank you for visiting this video on data representation and modeling. I am Rahul, a project coordinator at the Northeast Big Data Innovation Hub, and I will be walking through some data modeling concepts today. Data generally comes in various forms. It could be structured or unstructured. For this video's purposes, we will be discussing structured data. Now, structured data generally is in the form of relational model containing tables. In a scenario where we have structured data, how do we figure out what columns to use and what types of schemas will be beneficial, beneficial for our analytical model? Data modeling will help us answer this question. With structured data, we are trying to capture the semantics of data and semantics talk about a relationship where attributes of one class have correlated features with each other. So the question we need to ask is, what are the features of the given data that we want to encode? While making the connection between an entity and a class, the relationship between these two stated terms can be represented by an example shown on the slide. The relationship explained above stating that men are mortal and Socrates is a man, therefore he is mortal. Here the class of entities is men and an individual of this class is Socrates that follows all attributes of the class. This is the kind of entity class relationship we are trying to build with structured data modeling. Some key notions that are used for data modeling are listed here. Classes can be seen as sets or collection of entities or similar characteristics. Instances of these classes are those singular entities that represent characteristics from the class. The characteristics that individual entities possess are called properties. For instance, if people is a class and Aristotle is an entity of this class, a property they might possess could be name or that they are mortal. Two classes can be connected by a concept called relationships. For instance, the class people could be related to the class teachers, since teachers are also people. Knowledge graphs, entity relationship modeling, and knowledge representation are some techniques used to define and manage the relationship between different classes and entities. We will be looking at some of these in the coming slides. There is a whole subfield of artificial intelligence called knowledge representation, which is based on logical assertions. As an example, people are mortal is a logical assertion. Based on these assertions and the relationships that they encode, we can infer additional predicates. Here we can conclude that Aristotle is mortal since he is a man, which is a subclass of person and persons are mortal. These are the underpinnings of knowledge representation and there are multiple ways of codifying these assertions. This one discussed here is at the level of logical constraints. A knowledge graph is also how people think about databases, tables, and other structured data forms. But a knowledge graph is quite detailed and complicated. So what we often will do is to draw what we know about classes and relationships as a graph. Here we have classes in red and their instances in gray, while the edges represent the relationships. For example, subclass of states that adult is a subclass of man. Here, what we care about is that we are often given data at the level of instances and we need to figure out what classes the instances belong to because those are important features for helping generalize and learn relationships among the data. So we will often have knowledge graph that knowledge graph data that accompanies information about individuals. Knowledge graph is just a graph with nodes describing classes and entities and specific kinds of edges describing subclass and instance relationship or other properties. 
example here is the has teacher property talks about instances of classes that have a teacher. As an example, to determine if Aristotle is mortal, we follow the links on the graph that tell us that Aristotle is an instance of the class man, which in return is a subclass of person, which going another step further is a subclass of mortal. And therefore, we can conclude that Aristotle is mortal. Freebase and DBpedia are some commonly used knowledge graph services in the big data industry. As an example, to determine if Aristotle is mortal, we follow the links on the graph that tell us that Aristotle is an instance of the class man, which in return is a subclass of person, which going another step further is a subclass of mortal. Entity relationship better known as ER diagrams are mostly how database concepts are explained in the industry. The rectangles are entity sets or classes while properties are shown in ovals. An instance of an entity set has many entities. For example, if man is a subclass of person, then every property of person is inherited by man and every instance of man is also an instance of a person. Here we see how an entity relationship graph model can be converted to a regular relationship model table. Sometimes the relationships between entities themselves have properties and relationships that may involve more than two entities. So in ER graphs, we do not directly connect entities, but introduce another type of node for the relationships which can connect multiple entities as well as properties shown here as a yellow diamond while the gray diamond has the same is a meaning described previously id is a unique identifier for person a key in the database parlance. In has teacher, we are relating two entities based on their keys. The key of the person who is the teacher of the man who is the student. Anything that links to a key is called a foreign key or maybe a pointer reference. So the reuse of the key of a teacher represented by a student in has teacher is called a foreign key since it references the key of a teacher. Suppose another property to has teacher was added, for example, a type, then another column would be added to the table. Note here the tables are not just flat data, they can be used to encode graphs through their relationships. ER diagrams are used to define tables in very complicated schemas. Here is an example of one for genetics, molecules, and gene sequences. The exact notation will vary from place to place, but the general idea is the same. Understanding how to design these graphs and the corresponding tables is the topic of a course on particularly on databases. Here we will only focus on understanding the idea that data frames can be used to link entities together and represent complicated relationships. Let's change gears and talk about non-flat data. A common misconception about relational databases is that they can only capture flat relationships, but relational models can be represented through graphs, which can be traversed through queries which may not always point to a flat relationship between data and attributes. With relational databases, we can definitely represent uh, the example on this slide using separate tables and joins. However, it may be more intuitive to encode it as a tree. 
that is in a JSON format. But a tree is a special case of a graph. So there may be things that can be expressed as graphs that cannot be represented as trees. For example, cycles. Even for acyclic graphs, to represent it in a tree form, we would need to replicate portions of it. For example, suppose that two people own the same phone. To encode that, we would need to replicate the information about the phone in each person's entry. Alternatively, we could be given an ID to each phone and just store the ID of the phones within the phones field rather than complete rather than the complete information. We would have we would also have another list of information about phones, their IDs, and complete information about the phone. The latter representation would eliminate redundancy and update anomalies. No SQL databases are non-relational databases that are typically stored in nested or binary objects. Querying NoSQL DBs is simpler and slightly faster. Interestingly though, these nested objects can be captured in relations through multiple tables and therefore many NoSQL databases now have SQL interfaces. Let us recap some of the concepts touched so far. Classes are a collection of entities that hold information about instances that are generally represented as rows in a structured tabular format. Subclassing is an inheriting concept where the subclasses are connected to the main class through one or more attributes. Now, the relationship between these classes, subclasses, and individual entities can be represented using ER diagrams or knowledge graphs. Non-relational data can be stored in the NoSQL format and their representation generally pivots the knowledge graph to a tree with a root. Let us now work with a web scrape dataset synthetically generated from LinkedIn. This is in the JSON format and therefore stored in a NoSQL style. This is what the LinkedIn entry looks like. To the right is the JSON format of the web page shown on the left. Notice that the wall time is three minutes and 19 seconds just for 100,000 records. What is making this slow? If we look inside the for loop, we see that it reads one line of text at a time and then returns it into a dictionary, which is one of the slowest steps and, and it then adds the entry to a list. We will look at other ways of doing this to improve the performance now. Let's try a NoSQL solution and see if that helps with the faster execution. The script here creates a MongoDB client and reads the LinkedIn data directly in the JSON format. And then the for loop we parse, we use the for loop to parse it to JSON. This is the JSON data that we are working with. Note that skills is an array. The values are not expanded and cannot be seen on this image. Let us look at the comparison of finding skills from both the data frames, a data frame and the MongoDB JSON file. Note that in the data frame solution represented in the red box, we have to iterate over all the skills in the array which makes the code a bit complex. Whereas in the MongoDB solution represented in the blue box, there are operations over arrays that can be used with the find one function. Finding things in the data frame or in MongoDB is fast. The slow part of all this in the MongoDB solution is loading the data. Now we know that reading the JSON in a NoSQL format, either through a data frame or through MongoDB is not a fast process. What if we don't use a NoSQL solution and prefer something like SQLite? How do we take this and turn it into a data frame that we can use easily, that is with no embedded arrays? We must tease out the single valued information versus the repeated information, that is the arrays. 
So we could take ID, overview, HTML, locality, interval, summary, URL, speciality, and make them columns for a new people table. The things that are nested, that is arrays, should be another table using the ID of the parent and the ID of the entry in the array. Example for experience, we would have a table has experience with the ID of the parent and the ID of the experience entry. However, since this is a tree and is hierarchical, we can just use the entry itself rather than the entry ID to avoid a separate table for, for the experience object. This will simplify the design. Here is the representation. We can do the same for the other nested entries like skills, education, etc. This gives us a sliced and diced representation of the data. Queries are then used to put the data together again as needed. We use a left join in the first query in case there are people who have no experience. We don't want to lose them. But notice here that there are repeated entries for people with multiple experiences, unlike how it was represented in JSON. If you want to see the data in a form similar to the original JSON, we use group concat function. The syntax and ability to do this varies based on the kind of SQL implementation that we're trying. Creating a view of the nested representation of data can help us avoid repeated reassembling of data. Views can be seen as a cache table that is created for the purpose of querying in the future without actually holding any data. Here we are using a transaction to signal that all of the operations up to the commit should be done or none should be done and we create a view out of this. Relational databases provide with atomic transactions that allow being commit and rollback. These are not offered by NoSQL databases. Consistency and concurrency control are features within database management system that allow for concurrent updates of to a database. Finally, let's recap everything that we have covered in the video. We loaded a large data set from LinkedIn and observed that parsing the JSON to a data frame is a time consuming process. We then explored loading it directly to MongoDB, which is a NoSQL client. We also covered splitting and reassembling data, data sets through joins, and for non-static data, transactions and concurrency control can help us determine live edits on the database. And with that, I end this video. Thank you.